Welcome to the CMO Marketing Podcast, where we interview business owners, leaders, or marketing professionals to find out their lessons and stories for success. So welcome to the CMO Marketing Show, uh, Dimitri Kristoff. Uh, you are in, I believe, are you in Houston, Texas at the moment? Correct. I, I, on a complete side note here, I spent a week in Texas, getting in Houston, Texas, getting very, very drunk with my brother when he used to live there. <laughs> and I went to some fantastic bars and restaurants. And in all honesty, Dimitri, I couldn't remember a single name of any of them. So it was, it was that it was yeah. that good a week. Um, so tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about uh, you, you work for Rejects SEO. Tell us the story yeah. about that. All right, so uh, Regex SEO, we are a full internet marketing, full service internet marketing agency. We are, yes, located in Houston. And basically our idea is that we can take anybody who come to us, any client, <clears throat> and we take them from zero to a hero. Uh, the way we are different from our competition is that every decision, every step in our process we run through data analysis. So uh, instead of just trusting our gut, we trust the data. Uh, our bread and butter is typically SEO. That's uh, most of our clients, most of our work is about SEO. But in a lot of cases, in order to perform a very good SEO service, we have to make sure that the website is designed well, that it runs quickly, loads fast, and anything else that is uh, that that is uh, for uh, leads tracking, for conversions conversions tracking, all of that stuff, we need to make sure that all of that is done very much uh, correctly and uh, to its best ability. <laughs> so uh, we've we've done, we've spoken about SEO on this on this um, podcast <laughs> show uh, a number of times in the past with with um, other different other different people um one question i obviously wanted to sort of focus on with you is the design aspect mm -hmm. um and a lot of people don't quite realize that you know seo there is a you know it's a key component of seo is the design of the website what uh, what does that mean you know when you kind of say good good design you know what does that mean in layman's terms to the you know the business owner at the other end right so SEO, what, first of all, what is that? Search engine optimization. The goal of it is to rank on the first page of Google or any other search engine for the services you provide. And SEO has really four major parts of it. And the first one is content, then there's technical optimization, backlinks, and another one is user experience. And user experience really is, that's what typically uh, in lamest term, in lamest, in lamest terms, people understand as design. And the whole idea is that if you go to, as a user, if you go to any website from your phone or desktop or whatever it is, and it takes forever to load, or you can't find a button to contact a person, or you can't, you can't find anything, uh, any type of information you're looking for, well, then you're going to leave that website. And in Google, for Google, it is in their best interest to show websites on the first page that are engaging, that people do not leave quickly. Yeah. So that's where the whole design aspect comes in because that's where uh, user experience happens. Uh, if, if the website is not loading quickly, if there's some, any issues with navigations, navigation, that's user experience, which in lamest terms, again, means design. And, okay, so what's, a, <clears throat> what's good design and what's bad design? What, how, do I, how do I know what, if I look at my website and you know, what's good and what's bad? Uh, so, again, it's design as a word, as a thing, is quite subjective. Something that just looks good to you might not look good to me. So really, what it comes down to is usability. Is it easy to navigate? Is it easy to find information? So yeah. 
it, in this case it's designed not for not to look pretty but rather uh, to be uh, easily so that so that users can find things easily easily so that um, let's say phone number is very prominent that your contact page is easy to get to and so on and so on and so you obviously things like phone numbers and contact pages um, what about navigation um, you know there's a lot of websites that you see with uh, probably not complex navigation but quite in-depth navigation there's a lot of it there's a lot of um, uh, you know a lot of links it, is it sort of right. less less is more in that context not necessarily so uh, what most businesses do not realize business owners is that whenever you develop a website really you should be designing for two entities one of them is users people and users people like it to be pretty and flashy and uh, kind of nice looking and slick looking and all that stuff however Google they like the user experience part quickly find something um, not to not to get lost in the website so going back to your navigation it needs to be intuitive for people so what I usually recommend always uh, to any of our clients that that have troubles uh, judging or not judging but uh, making a decision if their website is good or bad uh, so take your website especially nowadays on a mobile phone uh, one of the smartphones and give it to your grandma or mm -hmm. grandpa and just tell them hey can you go to contact page and just observe that's it so and if you if they have troubles getting if it's not intuitive if they're trying to click on something and it's actually not clickable if they are trying to scroll but it's not scrollable uh, things of that nature that little test will tell you a lot and then the second step what I usually say after you give it to your grandma or grandpa give it to your kid or kid or niece or nephew that are okay. you know five years old or something like that and then ask them similar question and see how they interact with it and as long as it's intuitive and people even if your, if your navigation has thousand links but people can get to whatever they want to get to that's not a problem like think of Amazon Amazon has thousands of products probably hundreds of thousands now uh, and their menu is not small it's yeah. just built in a way that if you want to find something you can find something and sometimes a search bar is a very easy solution to that if you have so much stuff you can't fit it all in the navigation just make a search bar that works properly that um, does suggestions and things like that and you're gonna be golden if you're looking at your website and you're not sure if it's easy to navigate um, I mean I love the idea of the you know the grandparent test or the five-year-old test and yep. um, you know seeing if they can they can find their way there um, is it better for people to if, if they find that their website is hard is it better for people just to start again build a new website or you know redesign the existing you know is it enough just to do some quick fixes with the site um, it definitely depends it depends on how much thought has been put into the uh, when the website was built originally if your website is 10 years old or 15 years old probably you need to be doing a bit more of a redesign a bit more of a kind of drastic changes but in a lot of cases um, small tweaks here and there make a lot of difference and that's what user experience optimization that's where user experience ex, yeah, sorry that's where user experience optimization as a service comes in yeah. um, that's what we kind of do for a lot of our clients and we spend a couple hours on the website and then there are a lot of tools that allow you to see how exactly users interact with your website are they trying to click on something that they think is a button but it's not a button or it looks like a button but it's not a button or are they most are most people going 
and clicking on something that is at the top of the page but your main information at the bottom of the page so they don't even scroll to it so uh, you just need to do a bit of analysis and reach out to somebody or do it with tools that a lot of them have free trials or some kind of cheap plans uh, for session recordings for heat map for heat maps and then you as a business owner you would be able to make some decisions or at least you would be able to understand how much changes you need to do let's talk about your clients um seo obviously has a bad name uh in some circles you know there's yeah, lots of yeah. people i mean we've all had emails from you know people in uh you know india and trying to sell right. us cheap seo services right. Um, and not just India, like in multiple countries and things like that. But right. what sort of results should somebody? What sort of results should somebody be seeing, and how quickly should they be seeing them if they worked with a legitimate SEO company? That's a very good question. I'm glad you asked it. Um, so, a little bit step back a little bit. As yeah. always, you get what you pay for no matter what it's for, what it is, SEO or a car or a, a drink or whatever it is, the less you pay, most likely the quality will be matching that, uh, the price. So that's thing one. Uh, as yeah. for uh, if the company is legitimate, how soon you should, you should be able to see the results. It's a little bit complicated, but the idea is like this you should be able to see progress pretty much immediately within a couple wow. of weeks you should be able to see progress of some sorts it does not mean that the company will be able to put you on the first page in two weeks no however if you have been ranking on page 10 you or let's say position 99 you might see that you actually rank in on position 96 right. or uh, you've been getting uh, let's say on average 100 visits a month to your website and now you're getting 101 visit right so as long as there is progress and another thing which is very very important is a proper SEO agency or any marketing agency they should before they start charging you on for anything they should have a strategy meeting and expectations meeting so okay. what we do with our clients we sit down and we say okay based on the data on your current state of the website on your current state of optimization because everybody is different somebody has been doing SEO yeah. for years already uh, so based on your stuff we can get you to here in this many months and right. therefore we can uh, kind of track the progress over time and are we hitting those milestones are we hitting the goals in a month in a two whatever whatever those milestones are <clears throat> so as long as you see progress and the company you work with is transparent yeah that's pretty much the 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 sign that the company knows what they're doing and i guess the the million dollar question um <clears throat> how much should, should people be paying for it and i and i guess you know obviously you get what you pay for but you know there's there's some agencies out there that might be charging you know a certain amount of money and some charging a different amount of money right how do you how do you you know again how do you look at that from a layman's terms from a business owner who doesn't understand SEO and go should I be spending five hundred dollars a month should I be spending two thousand right. dollars a month should I be spending five thousand dollars a month right what, what are those numbers so golden rule for digital marketing or marketing in general is 10% of your revenue 10% okay. of your revenue you should be spending on some sort of marketing it doesn't have yeah. to be just SEO could be a combination of things and another question which I always encourage uh, business owners to ask is how much are the results that the company tells me that they're going to deliver are worth to the business okay. so let's say you come to me and, and say look at my data and what can you project 
how many leads or sales or whatever it is you can bring yep. in a couple of months or a year or whatever it is we sit down we say okay it looks like based on these numbers we can get you i don't know three three extra sales a month so yep. to the to you as a business how much are those sales worth are they is it just hundred dollars or are you selling something very expensive and it's hundred thousand yep. dollars therefore you kind of again should be exp the expectation should be that uh, around 10% of that extra revenue, that's what you're going to be spending. Uh, okay. It, it okay. just kind of makes sense, right? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> um, but And I guess probably the challenge then is, yes, you might start seeing results straight away, but you might not mm -hmm. start seeing revenue right away. So I mean, right. there's a difference between a result of a, you know, growth in a particular keyword or a particular right. traffic that doesn't necessarily turn into revenue straight away right yes that is correct uh it's it's typically a numbers game so there's a average for each website for each business there's going to be an average conversion rate meaning yep. uh, out of 100 visits to the website you're going to get this many leads so i think industry average is around three percent so okay. yeah Typically, you can expect three leads from 100 visits to the website. Okay. And yep. out of three leads, typically you look at your own business data sales, uh, how, out of three leads, how many do you typically close? Is it just okay. one? Is it two? Is it all three? Are you that awesome? <clears throat> and that's how you can project. So whenever you are talking to any marketing company, they yep. should give you <clears throat> they should give you projections for increase in website traffic in website visits and therefore looking at your website conversion rates you can pre predict or project how many more leads you can get and therefore and when you can get them because as you mentioned it's going to be kind of a slower growth so in how long or by what time can we get that extra hundred visits a month is it going to be in a month or is it going to be in three months and again you just Make those simple calculations, and typical, typically, good SEO companies, good marketing companies, they will present that upfront uh, before you start paying, or at least in the discovery stage, they will present it <clears throat> and then kind of guide you through that. Uh, okay. Typically, kind of a golden rule is the less they talk about data, the worse the <laughs> expectations should be right okay so if they're all just like promising everything yeah we're gonna get you 100 leads and don't worry how we get them uh, then something is not right so okay. just uh, trust your gut in that regard let's finish off because i, I want to understand you know you've been <clears throat> running your agency for what over five years now i think five to six years. yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh 60 um, now, right okay six years how do you find your own clients? I mean, obviously, I would imagine you have your own, you know, SEO strategy. But what what right. other ways do you find? You know, do you find? You know, sourcing new clients. How do they reach you? Right. So, uh, as you said yourself, um, our one of our biggest lead drivers is SEO. Yeah. So we are ranking number one in houston for seo company so if anybody googles and, SEO and what, houston, what particular keyword is that is that seo companies houston or is there th there are a few so seo houston houston seo houston company okay. seo houston agent yeah. seo houston agency agency and so on yeah. uh, so we are number one sometimes we're number two so that's one of the biggest ones and other than that we do uh, outbound strategies so okay. we kind of try to pursue specific clients we want to work with based on case studies and knowledge of the industry. Yeah. So let's say if we were able to achieve really good uh, results for a, like a, I don't know, um, HVAC company, like an air conditioning company yeah. in one area, then we can implement the same strategies and do the same thing for a company in a different area so that they're not competing, okay. but yeah. we can more or less not guarantee you but we can we can show that we've done this for this company we'll do the same thing for you and we're much more uh, we're much more uh, 
what's the word? I'm lost for words now. Uh, <laughs> we we are uh, we are much more sure that yeah. we can get that new company to get good results based on the previous experience. Well, and with that outbound strategy, what are you finding works best for you? Emails, phone calls. It cold emails don't work. Cold calls don't work. Okay. It is all about relationship building. It's about okay. it's about finding the right person, and in a sense, becoming friends. Uh, it doesn't have to be in a like a normal sense friend. You know, uh, have lunches together or anything like that. That would be great if you can. If you meet somebody at some kind of a uh, networking meeting or yeah. conference or whatever it is, that that's even better. But other other than that, nowadays, especially with COVID. Everybody's online, and there are a lot of groups that mm. that uh, you can make friends, air quotes, online friends through Twitter and all the social medias, and yeah. uh, even things like finding. Now it needs to be it needs to be natural. It, you, you shouldn't yeah, you yeah, shouldn't exactly. kind of fake it, right? So if you do enjoy somebody's content. Uh, and you like what their company is doing, but you see some potential, and it's really for any business. Like let's say, let's say like a, a, a what's a good example? Uh, well, I mean, sure, I'll stick to marketing uh, since I know it. Uh, if I see a company that does really cool stuff, but I see there's like a little hole in their marketing strategy, it's like, hey guys, you probably should be doing this, and then kind of run them through it. And typically, if they if you can provide value beforehand, before you charge anybody, yeah. the trust builds up, and that that way you kind of become friends yeah. before you start any business relationship. Okay. All right. Last question for today. What's your um, uh, what are your favorite brands aside from the marketing space? You know, is there is there something in Houston that we ought to uh, we ought to know about, whether they're in marketing or any other consumer brands? One that one that a business that perhaps impresses you a lot. Oh, that's a that's a loaded question for sure. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I am a foodie. Uh, I do like really good foods. Okay. Um, and I actually before I started any of the marketing stuff, I worked as a chef for quite a few years. Um, so uh, there are a couple good small restaurants kind of you don't find on TripAdvisor or anything like that uh, Velvet Taco they have a very okay. few locations very small place and it's amazing uh, yeah. so if anybody is in Houston area okay. do visit uh, Velvet Taco uh, as for just bigger brands um, I like Tesla Yep. because of kind of the futuristic aspect of it um, there's a lot of talk about is electric cars are, are they better or worse than in terms of uh, pollution and all that stuff uh, but just the idea of kind of thinking about the future and going to the future instead of trying to get the most out of right now well let's yep. concentrate on the future and capitalize on a little bit later I like that kind of strategy and future planning i do enjoy that part and their car looks cool so yeah <laughs> cool cool mate look thank you very much for your time today um it's been it's been great learning a little bit more about your seo approach and and, and also your, your business as well um yeah. if anybody wants to reach out and find you what's the best way of, um, of getting hold of you all right, so the easiest way is to contact us on the website, through the website at regexseo.com. Regex stands for regular expressions. That's a technical term, and SEO is okay. SEO. Yeah. Or uh, if you would like to reach me directly, then I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, and social medias, and my uh, handle is at Digital Spaceman. We are in Houston, NASA, all the goodness, you know, and then uh, the whole space yeah. going up improving yeah like there's the background the little space behind you yeah yeah cool. so uh, awesome. yeah add digital digital space add digital spaceman thank you very much for your time today have a good rest of your uh day i've no idea what time it is there with you i lose track of everything but 
Yeah, it's, um, night, it's night almost. Cool. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for being on the show, Dimitri. Thank you. Thank you for having me.